Fantastic to see you here this morning. Fantastic to see you if you're at home. I'm not going to see you if you're at home. Fantastic to welcome you if you're at home. It's, uh, it's great to be here this morning together. And uh, we're going to have a great time as we worship God together. We've had uh, Moise with us a couple of days this week. He'll be with us again next weekend. And we've got a whole weekend of ministry and stuff. But... But he's been really enjoying this weather. Yeah, yeah. He says, oh, I can sleep properly because it's warm enough. <laughs> it's quite warm in here this morning, isn't it? Anyway, it's good to be here together in God's house. We're going to begin by watching a video. Um, the youth went away this summer to, uh, to Limitless, a big youth event festival. 
and uh, they put together a little bit of a video. So just so you get a bit of a flavor of what they were up to, what they were doing, we're gonna be playing it. If you're at home, you won't be able to hear the sound on this video because it will be muted for copyright. So we're turning it down here. In the room, unfortunately, it's only gonna be on the two smaller screens because something's wrong with the other computer. But there we go. And uh, it will work for the words, but not for the video. So um, here we go. We're gonna watch this video. This is uh, a bit of a flavor of Limitless for you. On Friday, uh, they were just going around the room saying, what was your highlight? And because Josh asked me first, I, and I wasn't prepared, I hadn't thought of it, so now I have. But I just came into one of the, those meetings in the evening and uh, arrived a bit late, came into the middle of the worship and all the kids bouncing up and down. But then that was the evening where they gave a gospel appeal in the middle of the worship. And uh, I think probably four or five of our young people went forward responding to the gospel to, to say, I want to be a follower of Jesus. And, and uh, I think the highlight for me was seeing Kezia walking with her friend to take her to the front. And uh, that was exciting um, to see. And so it's just been a brilliant time. I have the scar to prove it, look. Burnt myself on the on the urn, boiling some water. There we go. <laughs> Great. Well, that was a, a little bit of Limitless for you. Some of those are here. They're not all here this morning, but we just had a really fantastic time. You've heard a little bit about it. If you want to hear some more, talk to the young people. Talk to Josh and Jordan and Amy. Um, 
Jason's not here this morning. He was doing all the fantastic cooking for us. I was just serving him by getting stuff ready. But anyway, great. Well, we are going to worship Jesus together. I wanted to read for you, to you from uh, Luke chapter 19. And this is as Jesus approached Jerusalem uh, just that last time before he was crucified. It says this, as he rode along, he's obviously on a donkey, uh, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the edge Sorry, when he reached the place where the road starts down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessing on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they keep quiet, the stones along the road will burst into cheers. I think it was on an album by Ron Canoli years ago. He said, I ain't going to let the stones outpraise me. And this morning, you know, if we don't, the rocks will worship. Well, let's make our worship louder. Let's lift our voices. Let's declare the praises of God as we sing together, as we worship together. Let's, let's think about just how great he is. Imagine those disciples as Jesus is coming to Jerusalem. They are giving it their all. They're putting their coats on the road in front. All of that stuff is going on. How often do we give our energy in that way. I just want to challenge you. It's hot this morning, but let's make a sacrifice of praise this morning as we, as we worship together. Let's, uh, let's stand together. Father, we thank you that we can come into your presence. Father, we thank you that we can worship you. And this morning we declare we're going to give you our all. Father, this morning we declare we are going to outpraise the rocks this morning. We're going to lift your voice. We're going to declare blessed is he who comes in in the name of the Lord, glory in the highest heaven to Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to praise you. Amen. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. We sing to the God who always makes a way. He hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. We were the beggars. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We were forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't 
be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. Yes, we give you praise. Oh, Jesus, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory this morning. Because you are so, so good. So, so worthy of all our friends. We are being early, and this is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never ever alone. Anyhow, J E S U S. Us and gave his best without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know our God knows exactly what I need so I remember this let's go when you ask he cares when you see he's there when you knock 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 God opens up the doors when you ask he cares when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Bring my VIP Ellie, and this is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never ever alone. Running now, J E S U S, came down to us and gave his best. play the kids song and then move on but you know, <laughs> but you know this song has been in my head all week after Gareth's talk last week and you know we find it easy to sing this song when we class it as a kids song when we go knock 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 God opens up the door knock 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 God opens up the door ask he cares seek he's there when you knock 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 God opens up the door we find it easy to sing it as a kid's song. But it's truth. It's, it's not just a kid's song, it's truth. And it's powerful if we declare it and we do it. And we keep, keep knocking. We don't do the... We, we as adults transform it into... Every now and then I push on the door to see whether it will open. God says knock, knock, knock. Keep knocking. Knock, knock, knock. Keep knocking. I'm not going to get us to sing it again, but I wonder if we put the words up to this chorus. So we just say them again together. Lay up. When you ask... He cares. When, when you seek, seek he is there. there. When, when you, you knock, 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 God, God opens, opens up, up the door. door. When you ask, 
he cares. When you seek, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Heavenly Father, we just pray for all those doors that we are knocking on. I just pray that you will give us renewed strength to keep knocking. Where we have grown tired and weary, may we have new strength to keep knocking and knock, knock, knock on the door because you care. You care. Amen. Where else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine? Perhaps creation longs to have the words to say. But this joy is mine. With a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand You alone deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand Song 
couple of things to set up so as I do that I'm just gonna as we come to communion one of the great things about communion is, is that it's one of those acts of worship and observance that like Jesus specifically told us to do like do this to remember me till I come back and it's um you know and he does that because he knows we're forgetful <laughs> that we need to keep coming back and getting uh, getting that that in filling um, in 2 Corinthians Paul describes Christians as we're like jars of clay because we've got this the best news ever <laughs> um, this amazing treasure inside but we keep leaking it out everywhere um, and that's why we need to keep coming back to the table Shall I use that one? It's up to you. Yeah, go for it. Hello, I'm over here now. Uh, I mentioned the clay thing because um, I've been working with clay after work because we've got a kiln uh, at my work. Uh, and so I've been making things out of clay and as part of kind of as a, a prayerful 
act and to think about uh, communion. I made some communion cups, and um, I wanted to share sort of some of the thoughts that I've had around that. And I felt like I couldn't come up here with clay and not talk about uh, Second Corinthians, so I thought I'd do that while I was setting up. But um, and there's lots more I could say about that, but I don't have the time. The something else that that really spoke to me as I was like making these, uh, I would like to share with you now, and because. You know, communion speaks to Jesus' promise to us. And that promise that he's going to come back, it, it speaks to the, the end and the conclusion, the restoration of everything, but it also kind of links back to the beginning of things. The Bible, you know, gives us an account of the way things started. Two accounts of, of the way we came to be here. Each account in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, they gives us a slightly different lens on how we can relate to the rest of creation and relate to our creator. I'll quote to you from the second version of how God made us. So streams came up from the earth, watered the whole surface of the ground, and the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. So that's from Genesis 2. And one of the remarkable things about this account to me is that God formed Adam from like a, you know, like a material element from clay, this wet mud. And to do that, yeah, you have to be, he's, God is interacting in a tactile way. Like you have to have hands to mold something. So we can imagine God as this like cosmic ceramicist uh, his fl- uh, our flesh in his hands, and it is dead. We are dead, save for the life that he breathes into us. And I want to ask you to hold that image in your mind um, for a moment, the idea of being held and molded by God. Uh, as I read to you from another passage in the Bible, this passage is similar in a lot of ways because... It's again we see God embodied, engaged, uh, elements in his hands, engaged in an act of creation. And then I uh, accidentally closed my notes up. It says, he took the bread and he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And I forgot to put the juice in the cup, so I can't do that bit. But that passage comes from Luke, and Jesus teaching his disciples about a new creation. In his hands, this time, is not lifeless clay, but um, bread and wine, symbols of life. So instead of forming Adam's body, he takes a symbol of his own body and breaks it in order to make us whole. And I've just been really impacted by that kind of comparison, this creation, and then the new creation in Jesus. At the communion table, we are invited to understand and experience this new creation, to spiritually speaking exchange like our lifeless mud selves for life and vitality in Jesus. So as you approach the table today, we'll have um, people come around and give it to you. Um, As you hold the elements in your hand, reflect on that image of God molding human beings from clay. And as you ingest it, meditate on the thought of God's life-giving breath. Um, so a couple of folks I have sort of said before the service, if you want to jump up and help serve, we need a couple more people. So if you want to help serve, jump, now's the time to jump up. Um, and as this come, comes around, we'll sing, and uh, I've just got something I'd like to pray. Uh, and if you agree, you can say amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the communion table. 
for this embodied action we can take part in that connects us to you and to your promise to us. Holy Spirit, named in the Bible as the life-giving breath, breathe on us as we accept the life given to us through Christ. We offer ourselves to be shaped and moulded by you. Amen.
kingdom come here in Folkestone. The prayer is your kingdom come here in this world. Because we need his kingdom, don't we? The kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Kingdom come, your will be done. Maybe we could almost just say that bit together. Oh, I'm picking it out. Whole thing. Praise the Spirit. Let's just pick that little bit out. And maybe this morning you want to make that your prayer and say, Yes, God, your kingdom come here in my life, in my heart. And we pray your kingdom come here in Folkestone. Let's say that little bit together. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that, Lord, your kingdom come. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Do you know it's good to pray the Lord's Prayer? <laughs> what Jesus taught us, didn't they? When they said, teach us how to pray. God, they're great words. <laughs> they're great words. Maybe that could be something for us this week. Take some time to go, actually, let me come back to the Lord's Prayer and just pray that. In a moment, Sarah's going to come and she's going to preach and bring us word, which is really exciting. I've got a few little things, little announcements before the kids can go out. Um, the first one is a little bit of a thank you, actually. And um, here at Harbour, we have a board of trustees. We have trustees that do a grand job of um, covering everything, <laughs> everything, all of it. Um, and we've got various different members of our church on that trustees group and um, Heather, where is she? She's over there, has been serving on the trustees for many years and um, has come to a point where she's going to be stepping down from that role. But we just this morning wanted to honour you, Heather, and just give our thanks. Thank you, because it's a big job, big trustees, you know. So can we just give a big round of applause? Heather, up you come. It's a little... A little card and gift. We really appreciate everything that you have done, Heather. Um, we really appreciate all the trustees. So you might be there going, oh, I didn't even know that that was like, that's part of church. Is, um, and the trustees spend a lot of time discussing all variety of things. I say all variety of things. It, it covers all sorts. But um, Heather, we really do appreciate you. So thank you so much for all that you've done. Um, We've got very exciting things coming up next week. We have um, Moise with us, which is very exciting for Burkina Faso. Um, as Gareth said earlier, he's enjoying the temperature. Um, so it's going to be really lovely. He's going to be with us here Sunday morning. 
And then in the evening, we've got a joint service with SKCC, which will be here. Have we got a time? No, I'm looking. We think 6.30. It says 6.30 in there. So 6.30 here next Sunday evening, joint service with SKCC and enjoying Maurice being with us, which is really exciting. We've got um, the women's conference coming up. Ladies, if you haven't booked on, book yourself on. There is a QR code that works now, Pete, I understand, brilliant. Um, a QR code on the notice sheet, so grab one from the back if you want to. Um, I think in the email there's links. Come and talk to us if you're struggling with any of that, and we'll help you get yourselves booked on. Also, a date for the diaries, Sunday the 24th of September, um, 6 p.m. here is our next CTF Schools Prayer. Um, I'd love to encourage you to come along. This is a great opportunity. We do this twice a year to just gather and pray over our schools, over our young people across the town. It's such a great time, so come along to that. Looking at my list, because there are a few different things. Let me just check. Pete, I haven't forgotten you. Pete, you can use this one. Yes, um, so our coffee morning started back this week, it was always a little bit on and off over the summer, um, and for those that you don't know, our coffee morning is a, it's a safe space for people from church to come and gather, people from community coming in, from all, all sorts of people come through, and it's just, we're there to welcome them in, serve them delicious cake, um, and there's also a chance for them to access things like the uh, pet food bank that's been set up locally that we're one of the places. And in October, we're going to have ex an exciting development that the we've always been somewhere where we can give out vouchers for the food bank, the local food bank. They're moving to a mobile service um, where the food bank, and there's also, for those that know, the Hive Pantry, which is a really good way of helping people um, who are struggling, you know, pay five pounds, get 25 pounds worth of food, and they're going to run the pantry and the food bank from a van, and we, on a Thursday morning, are going to be one of the places that they come to. Um, so that's part of why I'm up now, <laughs> uh, because it does mean we're going to have a few more people coming through, um, and so there's, we would like... If you feel that you might be able to make some cake, uh, we'd love to uh, add a few people to the cake making rota. We have a fantastic bunch of volunteers who work very hard to provide delicious, lovely cake. But if you think you could make a cake or two a term, then come and speak to me, come and talk to me about it. Um, or um, if you think you might be able to help on the day, um, with serving tea and coffee and chatting with people, also see see me as well. That would be brilliant. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, have a little think, see if you can serve in that way and go and chat with Pete. Okay, children, it is time. You may go. I love it. Sim is running. It's like, yes, at last. Um, we have a crash for preschool age children, and then we have Sunday school for our primary age kids. Everyone heading over to the back door. Um, why don't you take a moment to say hello to the person next to you or behind, um, or just fan yourselves a bit longer, and then Sarah's going to come and preach. Morning, everyone. 
Thanks. <laughs> Morning, everyone. You're so busy saying hi to everyone else sitting around you, which is, which is brilliant. We've had, um, uh, we, we keep talking about this man, Moise. Moise is a pastor from Burkina Faso. Um, I know that not everyone knows him. Um, he's here in Folkestone for a couple of weeks. He's been with us since Tuesday evening, and uh, he's in Watford this weekend with good friends of ours, Tim and Helen Roberts. They're having celebrations to celebrate Tim and Helen serving 25 years in Watford, so there's a big weekend happening up there, in, there this weekend, and Moise is a part of that. He went to surprise them. Isn't that lovely? Friends like that are good to have around, I think. Um, he made me laugh on Friday. He and Gareth were leaving the house in the morning. Gareth drove him to Watford, and he had uh, his shirt, he had his jumper on, and then he's got the thickest coat you ever did see. And <laughs> so he picked it up, and he looked at me, and he went... Sarah, do you think I'll need this coat? <laughs> so I looked at it, oh, I went, oh, Moise. <laughs> like, no. He said, but will it get colder? I said, no, it's going to be even hotter in Watford, like, you know, like nearer to London. And, uh, so, and then I just went, but Moise, if you think you want it, I don't want to. I've been having fear all weekend that he's up there freezing, and, and I persuaded him to leave his coat behind. Yeah, so uh, he said, I don't want to be one of those crazy Africans where they just go, look at him, look at him. But um, yeah, it's, it's a blessing to, to have him around. I'm really conscious of the time. and You know, whenever I have a microphone, I can waffle easily, but I don't want to do that. I really want to just share God's word. Should we pray together? Um, would you write where you're sitting? If it helps you to symbolically open your hands. I'd almost say if you even want to just you know, adopt just a, can we just adopt a posture of humility before God? Where we just simply say, Lord, I want to hear from you. If I could sum up my message this morning, then it would be a prayer. Open my eyes, Lord, I want to see Jesus. Open my ears, Lord, and help me to listen. So you may just want to say that to the Lord right now doesn't have to wait till my conclusion for you to pray that. Maybe let's have the response before we preach. <laughs> Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus. Open my ears, Lord, and help me to listen. Holy Spirit, I welcome you here in this place. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I just want to come against anything that would seek to distract from your word. We want to just take authority over our minds and our emotions, the thoughts that would come in and seek to steal, kill, and destroy. And I pray, Lord, that all of us, including myself, would have clarity of heart and mind and an openness towards the voice of heaven. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Prayer is so many things. Put your hand if you were here last week. Were you, were you here last Sunday? Okay, so a lot of you will have heard Gareth begin to talk about prayer. It was a great message. I wasn't here. I listened online, and I'd encourage you to, to do that. As Gareth just introduced, uh, just us looking at prayer. And if you're in a connect group, shall I ask for hands up again? Did anyone go and see and listen to the teaching this week? And sadly, I wasn't able to make mine, so I will catch up. But, um, but I really want to encourage you. We are looking at um, Pete Gregg's teaching through the 24-7 prayer movement on, on prayer. And between now and Christmas, we're going to be just listening. I, I really want to just commend Pete Gregg's teaching to you. It's excellent. I think many of you are aware of him and listen to various things that come from the 24-7 prayer movement. And so we're trying to understand a little bit more about prayer. Gareth said this last Sunday, and I liked the simplicity of it. He said, prayer is unsticking the things that are stuck. I liked that. That sounds very deep and theological to me. <laughs> Do you want to just say that out loud? It's unsticking the things that are stuck. I found myself on Friday morning in a situation where I just said, God, something is stuck. Do you ever find yourself like that? Are you ever in a scenario? you ever find yourself at home, at work, driving your car somewhere, just carrying, maybe actually you say for years, Sarah, I'm carrying something in my heart, I'm just going, God, this is stuck. Do you know what the psalmist said? I cried to the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. In my, in my place of need, I called to him. Out of my distress, I called to him. 
I'm off my notes already. But, but I want you to know our God is a God who hears. When we were singing that song, Knock, 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 I hadn't heard that before. And Dave, thank you, you're right, you know, twee little kids song, and we all go, or oh, whatever, but the truth of it, right, the truth of it, and Mary Jane said to me, I said, oh, I don't know this song, she said, all across this town, in schools, it's the favorite song. There are hundreds of kids right now singing that song. Yeah, come on, somebody get a bit excited, I know we're hot. Turn to the person next to you and say, just wake up, come on, get a grip, get a grip, wake up. Um, as we were singing that song, Knock, 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 I wanted just to, I'm going to say this because somebody might need to hear it. Sometimes we say, God isn't answering. I've knocked and he's not answering. That's a lie. God always answers. He always hears. I'm going to be talking about that this morning. He is the God who hears. So don't ever say, God's not hearing my prayer, because if you do, you're aligning yourself with Satan's lies, not with truth. Be careful what comes out of your mouth, what you speak will be. Okay, don't ever say God hasn't heard. Don't say that. You could say it feels like he hasn't heard. Don't ever say he hasn't heard. It's a lie. He always hears. He, his name is I am the God who hears. But just maybe, because we are in a spiritual battle, church, it's time to wake up, just maybe... The reason why we're not receiving the answer or the breakthrough is because we're not knocking enough, because there is a battle. Not because God's going, uh, they're not knocking enough. No, 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 no. Because there is a battle. There are spiritual forces that are seeking to interrupt your relationship with God, the freedom that, that you need to receive. Am I making sense to anyone? So when you're hearing knock, 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 I want you to know some of us just need to wind ourselves up again, get a little bit more persistent, because the issue isn't God. But somehow we've believed this lie that the issue is God. No, the issue isn't God. The issue is that there is a battle on. There are things right now in my life that I am knocking, 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 saying, God, I need a breakthrough in this. Is it that God isn't hearing? No. Is it that God doesn't care? No. Is it that God has turned his face away from me? No. The opposite. But there are spiritual, there is a spiritual realm. I, I, this isn't my sermon this morning, but I, I just want you to take my word for it. Take the Bible's word for it. We are in a spiritual battle and there are forces that we need to come against in order to receive from heaven all that is ours. Am I making sense to anyone this morning? So this prayer stuff is real. And, and so would you do me a favor the next time out of your mouth goes, God isn't hearing, rebuke yourself. Rebuke yourself. And if you hear a friend say it, rebuke them. It's not true. We need to understand the difference between feelings and truth. Where's Annie? Is Annie here this morning? Annie said that last week at communion, didn't she? Um, somebody tell Annie I was listening. Oh, Lord, the time. I wish that clock would stop. Prayer is so many things. Oh, unsticking. That's what I was saying. Unsticking. <laughs> unsticking the things that are stuck. Two things have happened to me this weekend. I was stuck, and I said, God, I'm stuck. Would you unstick? And um, something just very personal for me. God's showing, Sarah, I will unstick. I will unstick. Why don't you pray that this week? God, I'm stuck. Do you know why he's revealed as the Lord our helper? Because he knows you need help. <laughs> the Lord is my helper. Oh, that means I... am I can't do it on my own. No, you can't. Right? We have to ignore, stop believing this lie that says if it's not going all right, something's wrong. No, if it's not going all right, something's right. In this world, you will have trouble. Who said that? Who? Jesus. It's a cheery sermon, isn't it? <laughs> but what did he say after that? Sit, come on. Take heart, rejoice, cheer up. It's going to be okay. It's okay. Prayer is so many things. How many times have I said that this morning? Because that's on the first of my notes. <laughs> Just like any friendship that you may have, you would know that if you were asked to describe that relationship, you can't just say it in one word. 
uh, human relationships are, are multifaceted. They have so many sides to them, and that's the beauty, isn't it? Isn't that the beauty of growing and doing life with people, that you get to see new things all the time? Isn't that the beauty of seeing people develop and grow? You get to always see. You go, wow, I haven't seen that before. Well, I haven't seen that before. Well, it's the same with our relationship with God. Prayer is multifaceted, and yet, sadly, it is so misunderstood. It is so many things, and yet it is sadly so misunderstood. Why is it so misunderstood? Because we often only see one facet of it. So as soon as I say prayer, you immediately picture this. Don't you? Yeah? That's what you picture. Maybe somebody kneeling by their bed. You picture a prayer meeting where you're falling asleep. Let's just, yeah. It doesn't often create positive thinking if you say, we're going to talk on prayer. Oh, words like duty come to mind. Words like you have to be there. Words like I've got to endure this hour-long prayer meeting. Oh, God, it is so misunderstood. We only see one facet, one way. And as a result, we too often disengage ourselves from this most beautiful thing that we call prayer. What is this thing called prayer? It is this. It's a glorious gift of relational intimacy and authority. You can keep that up for a little bit, Ethan, because I think we need to see that. I'm not quoting somebody else. This was just the expression of my heart as I sat writing yesterday. And I was trying to find the words to describe what is prayer. This is what it is. It's the most glorious gift of relational intimacy and authority. Your authority comes from your relational intimacy. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that in a minute. Another kid's song that we used to sing, I wonder how many know it, and we, it goes like this um, about God, don't put him in a box, don't shove him in a corner. Anyone remember this song? Don't you limit, well done, you're doing the actions for me, I love it. Don't you limit what he can do, don't shove him in a box, don't, don't put him in a box, don't shove him in the corner, don't you limit what he wants to do. I want to change the words of that about prayer and say, prayer, don't put it in a box, don't shove it in a corner. Too many churches and too many of us as individuals have shoved prayer in a corner. Oh, let's just finish with a word of prayer. If that's not shoving it in the corner, I don't know what is. I long for the day, church, hear me. I long for the day where our prayer gatherings, I'm not just talking about harbour, I'm talking about worldwide, where our prayer gatherings exceed any other gathering that we have. I really mean that. I long for the day where the prayer meeting is the fullest meeting in the week. I believe for that. At the minute, it's not. It's a handful of people. But I long for the day where prayer isn't shoved in the corner. It's not put in a box. It becomes the most life-transforming thing that we can do because it's this glorious gift of relational intimacy and authority. And yet so often it's despised, it's looked down on, it's mistreated, and it's misunderstood. It's no wonder because there's a spiritual battle for it. <laughs> Prayer, what is prayer? It's your relationship with God. Three things that I just want to say about prayer, and there's so many because it's multifaceted. I can't touch on it all. We could be here for hours, and I still would not say it all because it is ultimately our relationship with God. It is the clay that is breathed upon. That is prayer. It is the clay. It is the breath of God in our lives. This is what prayer is. I believe it's an, awa an awakening of our senses. A couple of years ago, literally at this time of year, I preached on, Lord, would you awaken our senses? Would you awaken our senses? If you were here, you'll remember me talking about the smell of the cookie and how I was like, I've got to have that cookie. Anyone remember that sermon or were you all asleep by that point? <laughs> I'd have paid anything for that cookie. Why? Because my senses, my taste buds were awake. God, I need that cookie. Prayer is an awakening of our senses towards the things of God. It is literally your spirit connecting with the Holy Spirit. That is what prayer is. That's exciting. This is another thing about prayer. I would describe prayer like this. It is knowing God and being known by him. Oh, I wish I had time to take you through the book of the Song of Songs this morning. I've sat in, in college this week listening to amazing teaching about this most glorious book that I've only ever understood as some human relationship, and it's all a bit weird, and it's all a bit, what's all that about? Let's avoid it. Do you know, to, to the Hebrews, it is considered the highest book. 
It is placed, at the, that's what it's the song of songs. It is the book of greatest delight because it speaks about our relationship with God. I am my beloved's and he is mine. Oh, I heard him call and I ran to him and he came to me. Oh, it's this most beautiful book that everyone just goes, oh, it's a book all about sex. Oh, whatever. No, this is about us and God. It's this most beautiful relationship, the song of songs, the highest book. This is prayer. It's knowing him and he knows us. God, I am known by you. I am yours and you are mine. Third thing about prayer is this. I believe it's fixing our gaze and our eyes on him. Paul says these words. We don't fix our eyes on what is seen, for what is seen is is just temporal. Rather, we fix our eyes on what is unseen, for what is unseen is eternal. Paul also said this in the book of Philippians, I want to know Christ. It's about knowing him. Going off, on my, going off again a little bit, but there's another place where Paul says this. He says, um, now we see in part. Do you remember this verse? But then we shall see in full, right? And then he, I haven't looked it up. I'm just doing this from my memory. I think it goes on to say, and then I shall be fully known, or as I am fully known. In other words, Paul is just having this revelation of God, you fully know me. Isn't that what the psalmist said? Lord, you know me. You know everything about me. You know when I sit, when I rise, you know everything about me. This is prayer. Prayer is this most glorious, intimate relationship, and it's the most glorious place of authority as well. Just a few things about what prayer is. Can I tell you this? To be a follower of Jesus is to pray. If, if, the, if the understanding of prayer for you is this, then you will beat yourself up with a dialogue, oh, then I'm not very good, I'm not very good. No, to be a follower of Jesus is to pray. That is what it is. You can't separate the two. If you are a follower of Jesus, you are in a relationship with Jesus. That is prayer. It is, it is prayer. It is your relationship with him. It's what you do. But I want to say this. To be a follower of Jesus is to pray, but to pray isn't always to be a follower of Jesus. It doesn't work the other way around. To be a follower of Jesus is to pray. It is to pray. It is to pray. <laughs> is anyone here a follower of Jesus? <laughs> that is prayer. <laughs> that is prayer. Oh, I don't pray enough, Sarah. I don't pray enough, Sarah. I don't pray enough, Sarah. Are you a follower of Jesus? Are you his friend? Do life with him. Just do life with him. But, it is, but to pray is not always to be a follower of Jesus. How do I know that? Well, I know that there's so many scriptures I could give, but can I just take you to the story where Jesus healed 10 lepers? How many came back? One. The one followed. The one had relationship, the one acknowledged, the one worshipped, the one adored. That's prayer. That's prayer. Adoration. Did, did that happen in Connect Group this week? Thank you. Just checking. Just looking at my Connect leader for affirmation. Thank you. Um, I will catch up. <laughs> That's prayer. Adoration. I love you, Jesus. The more I know him, the more I love him. The more I love him, the more I know him. Oh, come on, some of you. Is anyone with me? Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you because you know me, you know every part of me, and you still love me. What's all that about? I don't love every part of me. I really don't. Some ugly bits in me. Jesus, you love me. Ten lepers, nine went away. Were they followers of Jesus? No. But did they pray? Yeah, they prayed. They, they had a request. You're surrounded by people at work and maybe in your family, I don't know, all over the place. Our community is full of people who pray. doesn't make them followers of Jesus, right? There's a difference. But to follow Jesus is to pray. It is to pray. Prayer is, it is me and Jesus. It's my relationship with him, our Father. I've already said this, our authority comes from our relationship. Many, many years ago, many years, um, we were serving, Gareth, myself and a few others were, were at Detlin Showground and we were there working with children. And uh, we had about 250 children in a venue of a, of a camp that was there. And one of the speaker's kids, I won't name and shame because this goes online, and <laughs> uh, only a little lad, 
uh, he, he one day sort of stood up to Gareth and he went, don't you know who I am? Didn't he? Just like that. Don't you know who I am? Gareth went, yeah, I do. But you still got to do what I've told you to do. <laughs> and, um, and, and, you know, we kind of joked about this little kid and we're like, oh, you know, whatever. And, and as I was preparing this message, I thought, you know what? There's something about that kid that I like. He knew his dad. He knew his dad had authority. And so listen, am I promoting arrogance? No, 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 not at all. The way to relationship is humility, right? Jesus humbled himself. But I want to tell you this, there is something that that kid had that I want. I want to be able to look anyone in the eye and go, don't you know who my dad is? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know? I'm a child of God. If God be for me, who can be against me? Enemy, you think you're coming to destroy me? I'm telling you, I'm a child of God. War! And I'll tell you what, if a seven-year-old little kid who's a little bit full of himself can get it about his earthly dad, how much more should we get it, church? Come on. Don't you know who I am? Why don't you just turn to talk to yourself? Don't you know who I am? Oh, sorry, that sounds very arrogant. No, it doesn't. It sounds like somebody who knows their dad. This is prayer. This is prayer, intimate relationship with him. Can I ask us, before I move on to the second part of my message, to pause right now? And I've written this in my notes. Can we honor this most beautiful, glorious, powerful gift we call prayer? Can we honor it in our lives? And can we honor it in the church? And I feel like we need to repent for dishonoring it. Can I lead us in doing that right now? I can't repent on behalf of you. Only you can do that. But I can encourage you. I can invite you to. The Bible speaks so much about repentance. We need to understand that. That's another sermon for another day. But I honestly believe that the heart of God is grieved by the way we understand and talk about prayer. And I want us to stop it. (laughs) I want us to change it. I want us to honor because Jesus' body was broken, that we might have this. (laughs) So the next time you hear prayer, don't look at one facet of it and go, oh, no, that's not for me. Go, wow, this most glorious gift of intimacy and authority. Would you pray? Just close your eyes, and I, I don't know. Maybe you just want to simply say, God, I'm sorry. Father, on behalf of the church, I want to just say we're sorry. We're sorry for the times that we have dishonored and misunderstood this most glorious gift of our relationship with you and the authority it gives us. I'm sorry that we have believed a lie about what prayer is, that we literally have put it in a box and shoved it in a corner. And I ask you right now that you would forgive us. We're sorry, God. How dare we? How dare we take this gift and abuse it? How dare we misunderstand it? Father, we're sorry. And together we long for the day where our prayer gatherings are our biggest ever. (laughs) Not because we come to a meeting to please somebody, but because our heart, like the Song of Songs says, I heard you calling and I'm running to you. I'm running to you. Amen. There's two stories in the Gospels, I mean there's many, but there's just two I want to touch on very quickly, that just remind us of this awakening of our senses, because this is where I feel I just want to just land it today. The first one is in Mark chapter 10, if you've got your Bible, just look at it, you know it really well. Mark chapter 10 and verse 46. Jesus and his disciples, they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left the town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him, but he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and he said, tell him to come to me. So they called the blind man. Cheer up, they said. Come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. 
my rabbi. Oh, I love that, my rabbi. <laughs> the blind man said, I want to see. Jesus said, go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see and he followed Jesus down the road. Can I encourage you to go home and read these scriptures and pray, Holy Spirit, what do you want to say to me? All scripture is God-breathed. All scripture will speak to you. And so there are a zillion things that these few verses could say. Don't be one of those followers of Jesus that just sit and listen to what the preachers say, right? All we do on a Sunday morning is whet your appetite. We can't do more than that. We whet your appetite. You need to go and cook the steak. Right? There's not time. How do you in half an hour do the dinner? You can't. It's not possible, right? So it's up to you. Can I urge you? The times are getting darker. Don't mess about with this stuff. Know God's word. Right? That's a, that's a little aside. Rabbi, teacher, master, I want to see. Other translations say this. Here we read his faith. Instantly he could see. uh, Translations that are slightly closer to the original translations say this. He recovered his sight. I like that. He recovered his sight. His sight was restored to him. Why do I like that? Because that sums up what the gospel is. Jim, I loved what you did this morning. I loved it, out of the clay, the Genesis narrative, the perfection of the garden that quickly turned to imperfection. As, as humankind, Adam and Eve, as they disobeyed God and, and the, the Satan manifested in this snake, it's all a bit weird, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that's weird, but, but Satan <laughs> says, if you eat this, your eyes will be opened and, and you'll know. You'll you'll be judge of your own lives. They liked the sound of that. And so they they ate this fruit. And and it says, instantly their eyes were opened. What was going on is that that a new lens came. But it was a sinful lens. It was a lens that was going to cause them to see and to be led into destructive patterns. It's the lens that we see by today. And Jesus, if it, the, the, all through the Old Testament, the prophets declared, one day, Messiah is coming, and Messiah will open your eyes again. I, Isaiah is full of it, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all these prophets declaring, one day, Messiah is coming. A great light will shine in the darkness. Jesus himself opens up the scroll, and he reads from Luke, and he's reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. The Lord has called me and anointed me to bring freedom to captives, to open the eyes of the blind. He wasn't talking about a physical healing, although he did do physical healings. But all the physical healings were simply to point towards the healing, which we've heard about in communion. The healing, the restoration, the recovery, that actually the lens that we see through that is evil and twisted and destructive, and destroys our lives and destroys our world, that that lens dies and we have new eyes to see. And so as Jesus says to Bartimaeus, I'm going to give you new eyes. I'm going to recover your sight. It's a physical healing, but this is so much more than that. It is a spiritual healing. This is the gospel enacted out in this little story with Bartimaeus. Jesus is saying, I am now here and I am the one to restore and recover your sight that you might see again, that you might know God. It's a whole big sermon in itself. Paul talks about it in the book of Romans, in his letters. He talks about the gospel is here that we might see, that we might see, that our eyes might be opened to see. There's another little story. Would you turn to Mark chapter 7? You've got to look at these yourself. And you know, we're so blessed now. You can Google anything. You can, you can come up with commentaries that will teach you and help you about this stuff. Listen to this little story in, in Mark chapter 7, um, verse 32. Jesus left Tyre and went up to Sidon. 
Sidon before going back to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Ten Towns. A deaf man with a speech impediment was brought to him and the people begged Jesus to lay his hands on the man and to heal him. So this time we've had the blind and now we've got the deaf. Jesus led him away from the crowd so they could be alone. That's worth looking into, that's interesting. Then he put his fingers into the man's ears. Do you want to do that? <laughs> Visual aid. Do it to the person next to you if you want that's right. Put his fingers into the man's ears. Gets even grosser. Then spitting on his own fingers. Touched the man's tongue. Do you know, I wasted an hour. I say wasted. Nothing's wasted. An hour yesterday. What was that spit all about? Like, Jesus did it two or three times. If anyone has the answer, come and tell me, because I didn't really find anything that was, like, amazing. So, uh, sometimes we just got to go, okay, it's a bit weird. I think the best thing I read about it was that literally coming from within Jesus, like his very, his own saliva. Anyway, I digress. I thought there'd be a meaning in it, but there wasn't really. So maybe it's just gross, I don't know. Touches his tongue. The life of God, come on. Touches his tongue. Looking up to heaven, he sighed. I did look up that because I thought I sigh about things when I'm really agitated and frustrated and stuck in traffic. Oh, I can't bear it. And everyone's annoying me and I'm like, oh, for goodness sake. Anyone else sigh out there or am I the only one? Like sighing sounds a bit negative, doesn't it? Jesus, why did you sigh? It was actually a lament. It was a sigh that the, the uh, yeah, the, it was a groan. That's the actual word. It was a groan. It was a lament. Don't you lament over our world right now? And Jesus looks at this man, and it's not, he's not sighing over him. He's, not, he's going, God, God, this world is so messed up. And then he says this word that I'm really rubbish at pronouncing. Anyone want to try it? Epathy, uh, epatha, something. Anyone want to give it a go? It's not up there. I thought it would be up there on the screen. It's not there. Which means be opened. Instantly the man could hear perfectly and his tongue was freed so he could speak plainly. What's going on here? I want to tell you what's going on here. God says to us, I want to open your ears that you can listen, that you can hear me. Bible says this, let him who has ears hear what the Spirit is saying. Jesus is, is not only with the blind man saying, I've come to open your eyes that you might see. He's now saying, I've come to open your ears that you might hear. And there's something so powerful about this word, be opened, be opened. And I honestly believe that the Holy Spirit wants to come to us today and say, be opened, be opened, ears be opened that you might hear, that you might see. The Bible says so much about seeing and hearing, about sight, about eyes, about ears. In the, in the book of Exodus, we, we hear God saying to Moses, I have seen the oppression of my people. I have heard their cries. 1 Samuel 16, 7, God says to Samuel as he's about to choose David to be king, and there's all the brothers that look more like the real deal, and he's going, really, is it this guy? Go and read the story. And, and these words come, the Lord doesn't see as you see. God's sight is different. Oh, how we need the eyes of God. Genesis 16 the most beautiful passage, go and look it up, where we read about Abraham and Sarah, and then there's Sarah's mistress, Hagar, and, and, and I don't have time to tell you the story, but Hagar has this most beautiful encounter of God, and she says this, you are the God who hears me, you are the God who sees me, it's all there in Genesis 16, go away and read it, she has this revelation, this slave servant girl who has been abused, and, and her, it's not a good story, but God speaks into that situation of imperfection and he says, I'm the God who hears you. I'm the God who sees you. This utter revelation. The Bible speaks so much about our hearing and our seeing. Isaiah 40, have you not heard? Have you not seen? Do you not understand? God is the everlasting God. He is the king over all. Isaiah 40, Isaiah 60, I've come to give sight to the blind. I've given you ears that you might hear. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Oh, 
So many scriptures. I need another hour. The Bible speaks so much about our spiritual sight and our spiritual hearing. This is prayer, my friends. Harbour Church, all that we might see him, all that we might hear him. Dave, could you come up? Is that all right? That would be great. I want to finish by taking us to the story of Zacchaeus. And I really am finishing. And then I want to pray very simply that God would open our ears and open our eyes. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, so what did he do? He climbed a tree. That's right, Lynn. Zacchaeus climbed a tree to see Jesus. What will we do to see Jesus? Do you know, people go to crazy lengths to see people they want to see, right? Some of us go to crazy lengths to see the sport hero we want to see. <laughs> Now listen, I appreciate there are a few of you in this room that go, not me, Sarah, I would never do that. But listen, this is, this is something that a lot of human beings have. You know, we want to see our hero, our famous artist, the person that we love. You know, we pay a lot of money. I know, because I have some people in my family right now that will pay a lot of money to go to Wembley next year to see somebody that they really like. And, oh, can you imagine? Can you imagine if they saw me? Can you imagine? You know, I'll confess to being one of those people that will be in a room and if there's somebody that I admire or I like, I'm kind of looking out for them. Oh, did they spot me? Did they see me? Come on, am I the only one? You're all looking at me like you're perfect. But, you know, I know not everyone does. I know not everyone does. But, you know, if there's somebody that we really admire, you know, if your hero walks through the door, you're thinking, oh. and, uh, and, you know, yeah, I, I have this, right? If there's somebody that I particularly, I just think, oh, wow, if I'm a little bit starstruck by them. You know, I, I might be talking to you, Josh, but actually I'm thinking, Flip. I'm just trying to check. I'm listening to you, but I'm just checking in case they're looking at me. I can use Josh. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like we do that. That's a human thing. Oh, are they going to see me? Are they going? Are they going to know me? Wow. Did you all know that I used to like Jason Donovan? Used. To. <laughs> That was in my past. I'm a new creation now. The old has gone, the new has come. I can't deny if you walked in now, I might be a bit like... <laughs> yeah, bit of a neighbours fan. I went to Jason Donovan's concert. When did I go, Dave? Tell me, when did I go? No, but when? Was it three years ago? Just before COVID, wasn't it? I shook his hand. He looked in my eyes. I was the crazy one that went right to the front. And I was like, Jason, Jason. And he looked at me. He looked at me. And then he was shaking people's hands. And I went like that. And he shook my hand. I didn't wash this hand for weeks. He shook my hand. That's not true. I did. Don't put that true. You know what I'm talking about. It's like it's not really like as human beings at all. Like when I was in my late teens, early twenties, I went to see Jason so many times at the London Palladium because he was in Joseph. Did anyone go and see him? Yeah, come on. Do you know how long I used to queue outside at the back? I'd be there with my little camera. Do you remember those long ones? It was no phones back then, was it? It was your long phone that you pressed like that, 110. Do you remember? Yeah. Who had one of those? You had something even more, Tim. I know, you're a bit older than me. There I was outside the Palladium. I'd wait for like an hour just to see Jason. And then the bodyguards would get him out and they'd smuggle him in the car. And I've got some photos. I've still got them. I've got photos of him being pushed into a car. He never looked at me that day. He's just been put there. But I saw Jason. Did you know I saw the Queen? Did I tell you I saw the Queen? I'd like to say the Queen put her eyes on me, but she didn't. Listen, we get what I'm talking about. I want to pray that that longing that we have, that somebody might see us, would be a longing that God, God says, Sarah, your eyes, I am on you all the time, girl. I never take my eyes off you. But, but do you know what? I don't appreciate it. Oh, that's just God. What? God, the King of 
of all kings, the creator of the universe. He is looking at me right now. And I'm thinking about Jason Donovan. Come on. And I'm worried whether you might see me today or not, or I might walk out the door and you haven't seen me and I go, no. The King of Kings is looking at me right now. The King of Kings is listening to me, but he asks us this question, will you look at me? Have you ever tried to get someone's attention and you're looking at them and you're looking at them and they're just not looking at you? Have you ever done that? You know how it feels? I just feel in my heart that God is saying, I am looking at you, but you're not looking at me. Would you just fix your gaze towards me? Would you look at me and stop looking at others and worse, stop looking at yourself? Yourself is destroying you, but if you will look at me, you will find life glorious, glorious, glorious life. And so my question this morning is this, what price will you pay to see Jesus? Because I'm going to tell you this, if you'd pay 150 quid to see your favorite football team, or you'd pay 100 and whatever quid to go and see your favorite artist, what price will you pay to see Jesus? Zacchaeus climbed a tree. Jesus hung on a tree. He might see you. Sing. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see. I want to see. Of everyone else. God, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Change my heart. me 
you allow me just to pray a really simple prayer? But I would encourage a response from you. If, if this morning, just something of what's been said and it's just touched your heart, would you just, I don't want to invite you just to stand to your feet. If Zacchaeus could climb a tree, we can stand to our feet. If you just want to say, God, you know, the, the, the request was this, Rabbi, I want to see. Rabbi, I want to hear. Is that a request of your heart? I just want to see. I want to invite you just to stand to your feet and I'd love just to pray for you. Rabbi, I want to see. I want to hear. I want my ears to be unblocked. I want my sight to be recovered because I want to see you. There is no one greater than him. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I put my life on it. When you see Jesus, everything changes. Nothing is the same. I really relate to that story. There's another sight miracle where Jesus heals first. Where he, he, you know, there's like a part healing and then there's a full healing. Do you know the one I'm talking about? And sometimes people get a bit confused about that. Well, why couldn't, couldn't Jesus just do it all at once? Like the first healing, the guy says, I can see something, but it looks like people are like trees. Do you remember that story? Yeah? And then Jesus, it looks like Jesus prays again. What's all that about? Did Jesus not have the power? I, I don't know. To me, I haven't looked this up. It's just, my, it's just me. <laughs> I just feel like my journey is that. I feel like my journey is part healing, part healing, part healing, part healing. Anyone else? Like, oh, Norman's got the interpretation for it. Or I don't know. Okay. Remain standing. Okay. Jesus and all of Jesus' healings, what he was doing was he was instigating faith. No matter what he did, the, the, the thing with his spittle, rubbing mud on eyes, um, to the lady whose daughter uh, had a demon, he called her a dog. But when she gave him the right answer, her daughter was healed. So what Jesus does is he ends to get faith. And I think he's doing that this morning. He's stirring faith with us. But I want to just encourage you, like, keep asking. I want to see more. I want to see more. I want to see more. Let me pray for you. Holy Spirit, I want to release faith into this church. And I want to pray that we would step into this season of just a longing in our hearts that says, I want to see. I want to see. Would you open our eyes to see? Lord, I thank you for the multiple revelations I've had over my life. And suddenly I've seen you, and then I've seen you, and then I've seen you. Lord, I want to pray for every single one of us right now. Those who have stood to their feet in faith. God, that you would open their eyes to see you. And you would open their ears to hear you. For when we see you and we hear you, we are transformed. So now I pray the blessing of Almighty God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to rest upon you right now to remain within you, to walk with you, that you might know him. Amen. God bless you. I don't know if there's anything else to say. Oh, I do want to just say this. We'll, we'll tell you more about it in the week, but, but uh, we're, we're just going to have, we're going to begin some Sunday evening gatherings, um, just monthly. The first one will be in October, the first weekend of October, and, and we, we just want to gather here on a Sunday evening to worship and to to pray. We want to pray. And if in the past you've gone, oh, I don't do prayer, well, you're not going to say that anymore, are you? Because what is prayer? It's this glorious, intimate relationship that gives us authority. <laughs> it's wonderful. So we're going to worship together. We're going to pray. We'll pray for one another. We're going to pray and believe for healings. We're going to pray and believe for miracles. We're going to knock, knock, knock. <laughs> Right? We're going to knock together. We're going to ask and we will receive. We're going to seek and we will find. Why? Because Jesus said it. So we're going to do it together. So the first one will be on the, I think it's the 1st of October. Sunday night, we'll get the information out in the week. But I want you to know it's going to happen. We're going to call it Awaken. Because we want God to awaken our senses, right? So look out for Awaken Sunday evenings. And we're just going to gather together. And we're going to believe that God will awaken our senses to the things of the Spirit. God bless you.
you know, just want You know, when the little child was calling daddy, daddy, you know, I love you, daddy, I want you, daddy, where are you, daddy, don't go out of sight, daddy. Isn't that the way we should be looking at God? You know, I just thought, it came right at the same right time. It was when you was slightly quiet and then you started it. And I just thought it was such a witness. Just that scenario of, you know, children don't want to lose sight of you, do And, you know, they go to school and they come home, but they can't wait to be there. Don't lose sight of him. Yeah. Don't lose sight of him this week. Don't lose sight of him. God bless you. God bless you.